Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell and welcome to a new video and welcome to Moscow region. Now I'm outside of Moscow today I've come to this shopping centre which is quite interesting and I've come to see a hypermarket slash supermarket that's right behind me. I actually originally came to this shopping centre about a year ago to make a video about a hypermarket that was in this exact location and at the time it was going out of business. It had actually been bought by another chain of supermarkets and their plan was to close it down to take away the competition of their chain of stores. And what's replaced it now is a place called Mayak. Now in English that means lighthouse and we're going to go take a walk around this low priced hypermarket as it says right on the sign there and we're going to see what we can find. It's very interesting this physical location because they've actually opened a clothing store just over here and all of these different roller doors all the way down were different entrances that led into this very big hypermarket that was here in the past and what they've done now they've actually boarded up the back section right here so the stores on that side and then over here they've actually closed it off on this side as well and they've just got this one store in the middle which is where we want to come and have a look around there's already a few people shopping so one of the trends in Russian retail probably in the last few years is low-cost supermarkets or what they like to term them as hard discount supermarkets and this is definitely one of them there is actually a chain of these throughout Russia I've actually been to one way back when I started the channel about a year and a half ago it was in a brand new building on the lower ground floor now this is also in the lower ground floor of this shopping center so we're going to make a little bit of a comparison I think to the one that I previously went to a lot of people probably are new to the channel and haven't seen this type of store before especially if you compare it to other supermarket videos that I've made previously. The other way that these stores are described are warehouse supermarkets. And you can see from the displays and the racking at the back that they just simply put the pallets up there and then eventually they come down to floor level and they put all the items out for sale. And it has that warehouse feel to it. Now this is a fairly new location, I think maybe a few months this has been open maybe a little bit longer and you know the idea of the store is to keep it simple put an entire pallet of something out put a sign on it cut the top box open and go for it and that's what they've done the way the stores are laid out too it's essentially a follow the path store so as you walk in you end up kind of doing a few u-turns and around and around and then you come back to the exit on the way out. Now I'm not gonna make this video specifically about the pricing. I think already once we look at a few things here, you'll notice that things are quite reasonable and quite cheap. And that's the intention of this type of store. But if you're wanting to reference the ruble against the US dollar or the Euro, it's 92 rubles today to one dollar or one Euro. And I always like to just basically round it to a hundred rubles to a dollar it's a lot easier in your head to work out some prices so if you think of any sign you see as a hundred two hundred three hundred as one two or three dollars it makes sense in the pricing that you know one thing that's always interesting when you come to a mayak store is the way they lay out the products of course we talked about the fact that they're in boxes and pallets uh, they have got a little bit of organization to the place actually they've got quite a lot but you'll quite randomly sort of see here you've got like knee pads for roller skating next to a paddling pool next to windscreen wipers and <laughs> it's a very common theme throughout the whole store as I walk around I think possibly this is like the outdoor area or garden area or car section there's wrenches one thing I do get confused with here is how they put the signs. Now the bottom row stuff, like you see down here, is the signage right there. And then these signs are for this. And then I'm not really sure who shops 
on the top shelf, but there's signs also for other products on the top shelf. Now, you eventually get a hang of it as you walk around and you start looking at items and products, but it's just a little bit confusing right off the bat. There is some washing up liquid here. Okay, so this one is just about 101 rubles, so just about a dollar. And then there's the bigger one here for a dollar 80. So I don't really want to make this about talking about pricing because a lot of people will question, you know, the, each different uh, product that I'm sort of pointing out and looking at. So here they've got, I think, hairsprays or deodorants, I think. Actually, very cheap. 90 cents. Again, if I use the 100 to 1 explanation, it makes it a lot easier uh, in how you work out the price if you are converting it. There's Domestos. And if you're worried if Unilever is not in Russia, it's definitely right on the box, quite clearly right there. And the one thing that a lot of people questioned way back when I started making some of these supermarket videos and walk-arounds is come back in a year, come back in two years and show me all the products that are not here any longer or what have left Russia. And you know, we can quite clearly see on the shelves that products are here. Of course, there's quite a lot of domestic brands as well as international brands. And then at the same time, a lot of the international brands have domestic manufacturing here in Russia. And that's pretty easy to tell just by taking a product and looking at the barcode on the back so you can see where they're actually made and produced. So as you can see also, there's nothing fancy to this store. You get a trolley at the beginning and you just go up and down the aisles and grab what you want or need. I think a lot of people know Rexona. I think that's body wash. I always get body wash and shampoo mixed up. That's something that I do quite commonly. Plenty of different giant washing powders. Now, this store is not a uh, bulk item store. These are all normal, manageable sizes of items. So it's not intentionally giant products. They've got some cat food here. You now, when people buy cat food in Russia, they tend to buy the whole box or the whole tray of them. That's why they always look messy on the shelves. But only about 20 cents US for a sachet, which is very reasonable. Literally before coming to this store, I had not walked in it whatsoever. I was definitely in this exact location when it was Carousel Hypermarket. So it's definitely interesting how they've pivoted this space and the company that has leased this area, they've managed to sort of split it into three different shops. And this warehouse style is probably the simplest one to set up because you just need to put all the pallets in rows and then put the signage on them and you're good to go. Quite often when you come to these stores as well, you'll see literally they've got the pallet jack and the stock right here. So whatever delivery is coming in, it'll come out to the shop floor somewhere. And then at some point they'll actually open it and put it out once they can find a spot for it. Maybe you need some pans and cutlery and plates. Plenty of choices. One thing when you see a lot of these things, you always think that by default they're all from China. And then when you go and look at them closer, so much of this stuff is actually produced here in Russia. I think I'm not likely to see Coke or Pepsi in this store. They do have some in-house branded cola here, 33 rubles, which I'm sure it's drinkable. But is it enjoyable? I think it's really what you're used to or what you've grown up with. And then what, you know, mum and dad buy you if 
you're not paying for it or if you're buying it yourself. A few containers here, all very reasonably priced or very cheap. And that's the intention of this store is to find good value products at a very reasonable price. <laughs> this is an interesting name. It's like Sprite Up. So it's like a Sprite and a 7-Up. <laughs> they mix the names together. I think this is like a lemon, lime kind of product. <laughs> it's an interesting name that they've come up with, whoever did that. And then there's some more drinks here as well. Different uh, orange juice type drinks and bottled water. With all the signage in this last corner, there's no signage here. I'm trying to find some prices. About 50 cents for the pear soda. These are basically carbonated drinks, but different fruit flavors. So yeah, there's it's interesting. I'm looking at it again. When you see it from here, you think it's Sprite. And then it says Sprite up. I find it very interesting, this particular shopping center, when I came here previously and there was a hypermarket here and then that disappeared. Essentially the shopping center lost its soul and its main reason that a lot of people came shopping to this physical shopping center. And now there is three different supermarkets that have replaced one basically. So you've almost got more choices once you go for a few laps around and start, you know, picking and choosing different things. There's definitely some recognizable brands and then some not so recognizable if you don't go to the shops often and you know, you're looking at the name of something. So it's just interesting how, you know, <laughs> one shop left and three shops came all in the space of less than a year. I kind of like this concept of this pallet system. I find, you know, whoever's started this brand previously, I mean, there's quite a lot of these throughout Russia and they're slowly becoming more uh, available to all cities in Russia. You know, they need a big space to have them though. These aren't small shops, but just put the pallet, tear the box open and you're good. Never ending sweets and treats. And these are the whole tray that you can buy here. So if you like biscuits and different pastries, or maybe a big box of cookies here for 160 rubles. There's also a crazy big bag of cheese puffs over here. It's like a pillow, it's so big. I wonder for everybody watching around the world, the audience for the channel is very, very international. The amount of Russians that watch the channel is actually quite a small percentage considering how much Russian content I put on the channel and how much the interest there is with me making videos in Russian stores in English. And I wonder, you know, from everybody watching, you know, have you been to warehouse type stores before? Maybe let me know the brand name or the type of store that you've been to. This store, as it is, is completely a walk-in supermarket format and there's no need for a membership card or any uh, payment per month to come shopping here. So this is essentially a warehouse supermarket. So it's just an extension of what normal supermarkets are. They just have a more simpler layout the only challenge with this going forward is if you're gonna come back in two weeks and hope to find the same thing, maybe they don't have it in stock anymore because they've not purchased it a second time. So if you fall in love with your favorite pickles uh, over here, then they might not be here next time. I was just looking here at these different dried fruits and I noticed dried mango and I was thinking maybe it's from Thailand or somewhere like that. But on the back, it's actually produced here in Russia, which is a little bit interesting. I would imagine somewhere in Russia they grow mangoes, but I don't know how uh, 
how much they produce. Perhaps they do it in greenhouses like a lot of the other uh, fruits and vegetables. One way a lot of these different warehouse type supermarkets save money is to not have the open fridge concept or rows and rows and rows of fridges and deli type uh, refrigerators for storing all of the food in. So what they do, they've got these walk-in fridges and these are essentially just brought in and built as a temporary slash long-term solution and it just allows them to put all the products in one place and you'll see here all the different dairy products so things like milk, cheese and then plenty of different types of hams and salamis and again it's not meant to look pretty that's the idea keep it as simple as possible 40 ruble mayonnaise 80 ruble I think this is a pepper sauce and that's all you need to do another giant mayonnaise for 85 rubles and you know they're not beautiful looking but they just put the sign on the product and that's all you need to do and it's as simple as that and then you know you're gonna see things that are piled up and you know, that's just how the look of the shop is now if you're not into fish perhaps you might not want to watch this few seconds but they've got fresh fish here and when you walked in or when I walked in you definitely notice it but the idea is they just bring in that one box of fish they sell it out today and that's it perhaps tomorrow or the next day they'll get another delivery and that's all they need to do plenty of sausages they even have some beer in here as well so you can definitely find a little bit of everything in this refrigerated area got a can of peas here for only 40 rubles which is more than reasonable especially when you do go to places like Globus Hypermarket that I've shown many times on the channel you know these shops become more and more appealing once you've been to them a few times and you do get used to the brand names and how cheap they are comparative to other supermarket chains actually coming right to the back corner here it's actually really quite a big place and there's quite a lot of stuff please tell me that that's not duck meat if someone can read a Russian please tell me that's not ducks and that's just the brand I hope so well based on the one next to it that's obviously canned chicken I'm hoping the other one's not duck and that's how easy this store is they do actually have some freezers here with some frozen fish and usually most of them tend to have ice creams and even there's some frozen nuggets right there not sure how popular they are I know generally people aren't buying too much of this this frozen and then heat and eat type foods there's some frozen vegetables here these are actually from another chain of supermarket called Mirotog which is the biggest meat producer in Russia they also do other frozen goods but it's interesting that a low cost supermarket like this is actually using a regular middle income type supermarket product as something that they're selling in their store now in Australia for instance they wouldn't put one brand of supermarket product in another brand but in, in Russia it's not a worry to do that if we need some flour there's a two kilo bag here for 65 rubles so less than a dollar anything that I'm telling you that's less than a hundred rubles is less than a dollar even with the Australian exchange rate 60 rubles is one dollar here's all the different sachets for cooking and marinating and there's always a lot of choices if you want to make soups and stews I think possibly around the world people know Maggi 
That's what I like to call it. Some people call it Maggie. Let me know if you call it something else. If you're wondering perhaps why the shop is not very busy, it's really because this is Monday afternoon at 4 p.m. and most people would be at work. A lot of people who would come shopping would come at seven o'clock in the evening onwards. Most stores like this open till 10 or 11 p.m. So not necessarily people are in here during the middle of the day on a Monday. They do actually have a wine and alcohol section. And it's not too difficult to see the different products. They've cut the boxes open, at least the top few boxes, so you can read them. And then I think most of these are all Russian branded wines. There's plenty that you can get in all sorts of liquor stores across Russia. In the back here, we've got noodles and pasta. And this is somewhere where I could easily work because just the simplicity of stocking and refilling the store would be something that I could just do non-stop and just you know, keep replenishing. That's all you've got to do. Keep replenishing. Actually have a look at this. This is my shout out to David. Premium Italian wine right here. Now, I don't know if the name is recognizable, but there is a palette of Italian wine right in front of me and only less than seven euros a bottle. It always is interesting to me how wine can be produced in another country in the world, shipped to another country, and still be so inexpensive. And even when I see here in Russia, Australian wine for eight or nine or ten dollars a bottle, you know, how is that possible considering how far it's traveled? I don't know too much about different types of Russian vodka but for $3.50, you can get a half liter of Russian vodka right here. I mean, I think if you're gonna mix it and make it into cocktails, is it really important initially? Maybe if you're gonna drink or finish a bottle of it, it might be less than $3 for the one next to it. So I wonder if it's worth investing that extra 50 cents in the next brand. There's more, I think these are liqueurs here or like fruit type drinks. And then we come around to some snacks and chips. So you'll see also the packaging on a lot of things isn't in the store branded packaging. It's just generic with labels. So this company would source these products from manufacturers in Russia who will make them without the branding on so that it's cheaper. That's bottom line. It just lowers the price very easily and it makes the price at the register or in the shop here much lower for only about five dollars. You can also get a bottle of blended whiskey. Interesting how the whole label is in English as well. And it's even age right there. Original recipe. Would you drink some $5 whiskey? Or would you prefer the $3 vodka that I just showed you a bit earlier? So what does everybody think of this concept of warehouse type supermarkets? Now, I don't think it's a new thing around the world. Maybe wherever you live, let me know if you've got something similar to this. This definitely isn't a Costco type of shop because there's no membership. It's not an Aldi type of shop. Aldi has much more shelving and displays of the products. This is definitely pallets with boxes open and a sign stuck on the front. There's actually a very big wine and champagne selection in here. As I've walked around a little bit more, I didn't notice when I came around to one of the corners earlier how much they have. And then what's interesting is when they get a delivery, 
and they don't have any room in the back. They literally just put it right here in the front of the store and that's all they've got to do then and then eventually it'll get put out and found a home for it. But have a look at all of the wines and spirits that they've got literally stacked up here. It's not just a few, <laughs> a few boxes of it. There's some more of that whiskey right there and all fully written in English, which is quite interesting. And then more wines on this one here. Product of Argentina, Argentina to Russia. One of the few palettes of alcohol I do recognize is Barcelo here. And this is from Dominican Republic. And there's an entire palette of two different types of rum and of all the spirits, that's the only one that I recognized, you know, brand specific. One last look at the alcohol here and there is some bourbon whiskey on this side, which is, doesn't say where it's produced. A lot of the packaging is fairly generic and not mentioning too much about country of origin and how long ago did King Charles come to office or take over from the Queen? And they've already got King Charles blended Scotch whiskey here in Russia. There we go. Produced and bottled in Scotland, right on that bottom part of the label. Now this is right about $14, but even a year and a half after everybody was meant to have left Russia, there's King Charles Scotch whiskey and American bourbon right there. So as I head on out of Mayak hypermarket, now I prefer to call this a supermarket really. It's not the size of a hypermarket like you'll see some of my other videos. I really hope you found this interesting. And maybe even if you're from Russia, you've never even been to one of these type of stores. Please let me know in the comments if you've been to a Mayak before or not. And wherever you are in the world beyond Russia, have you been to a warehouse supermarket like that? Now it's definitely not Costco, definitely not Aldi. So what is it to you where you live in the world? If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Please, if you appreciate and like these type of videos, let me know in the comments. I've asked a few questions, I pointed out a few products. Let me know what you think. Even seeing King Charles whiskey, that's just so interesting. At this point in the last two years of events in Russia, that I can get Scotch whiskey with his name on it. If you'd like to follow me on Telegram, I have a Telegram channel and chat. You're more than welcome to click that link and join me over there as I kind of swing around to find my way out. And if you want to watch an old video, click right here and you can see another video on the channel, more than likely something you've not seen before. Thanks everybody. Bye.